Mr. Matt Paul, Three Minute History, The Dutch Revolt, The Dutch Proxy War, Early Elizabethan England. Let's do this. Firstly, let's look at one of the causes of this proxy war. And if we look at the Spanish Netherlands here, you can see the close proximity between England and the Spanish Netherlands. Also, they're called the Spanish Netherlands because they belong to Philip II, who was the King of Spain, Portugal, and had a huge empire across the world. He was also a Catholic, and he was one of Elizabeth's major enemies. Now, the Dutch Protestants did not like his presence there, or that of his uh, follower, uh, the Duke of Alba. Okay, so it was a very tense situation which had emerged on England's near border. One of the long-term causes of the Dutch Revolt was the Spanish Inquisition. Now, Philip II was a pious and devout Catholic, and he had no wish to see a surly, aggressive, rebellious group of Protestants in one of his provinces. And therefore, he sent the Spanish Inquisition, and that was to the Spanish Netherlands, and that was an aggressive move. Now, in 1567, he sent the Duke of Alba to the Netherlands, and the Dutch rebels had really been defeated. However, this would then cause further problems. The Duke of Alba enacted King Philip II's harsh policies towards Protestants, and he set up the Council of Troubles, which became known as the Council of Blood, which ignored Dutch laws and really put a very harsh treatment towards Protestants, condemning many of them, thousands of them, to death. This harsh treatment led to many Dutch Protestants fleeing to England, which was obviously a Protestant country, and it destabilised Elizabeth I's religious settlement, which would you know was a middle way. Elizabeth really wanted a better relationship between Catholics and Protestants in her realm. Well, this couldn't really be enacted with the troubles that are going on in the Spanish Netherlands. Now, one of her main advisors, William Cecil, was deeply worried by the fact that there were um, Catholic troops in the Spanish Netherlands, and he thought that that could be a spearhead for a future invasion. Now, this proxy conflict between Spain and England over influence of the Spanish Netherlands was really starting to boil over. And so Elizabeth did something quite intelligent. Now, what Elizabeth did was offer a promise of marriage to the Duke of Anjou, the Duke of Alisson, or Alisson. So she called him her frog, and she even wanted to get engaged to him. Now, uh, the English public really didn't like this, and a Protestant or a Puritan called John Stubbs uh, wrote a pamphlet about it for which his right hand was removed okay from his well from his arm so that shows that there was a puritan challenge to elizabeth's intentions there but she realistically she couldn't really marry a frenchman and a catholic so she had to uh, not follow that course of action even though it's in her heart's interest she really did love this uh, this duke of anjou uh, even though he was 23 years her senior sorry her junior she, he was, in fact, 23 and she was 46. I mean, look at these, this guy's Riz game. This guy's like, he's the Riz of us, isn't he? Look at him. He's, uh, I think he's the Grand Rizard. I think uh, he likes um, nuclear Rizix. So why did Elizabeth want to marry someone 23 years her junior? Well, it was because he was the heir to the French throne and she wanted King Philip II of Spain to think twice before taking harsher actions in the Spanish Netherlands. However, the Duke of Alba had very different ideas. And in 1576, it royally kicked off with the Spanish Fury and the pacification of Ghent. So, King Philip II's Spanish Empire, even though they had immense amounts of gold and silver, uh, they actually went bankrupt and he needed a Genoese loan. And a ship supplying gold was, uh, was uh, taken by the English, uh, English privateers uh, to just see uh, all the gold and silver that was supposed to be there. So... A payment that was supposed to go to Spanish mercenaries in the Spanish Netherlands never got there. And they were so angry that they didn't get paid that they sacked the city of Antwerp. And you can see the picture of this here. So just have a look at that there. It's really, really terrible. It was a massive, massive slaughter of Dutch Protestants in the Spanish Netherlands. And for this reason, <clears throat> this is something called the Black Legend around Spanish people emerged. And this was that they were evil and barbaric and would just slaughter Protestants wherever they found them. Now because of the horrible actions of these Spanish mercenaries, the Dutch, Catholics and Protestants alike uh, demanded the pacification of Ghent, which stated they want Spanish troops to be removed from the Netherlands, they wanted political autonomy and an end to religious persecution. Now Elizabeth sent uh, a loan of £100,000 to the Dutch rebels, so she started to take much more strident action against uh, 
King Philip II of Spain's influence in the, the Dutch, uh, sorry, the Spanish Netherlands. However, Elizabeth's plans, they don't really go forward in the way that she wants them to. And it's, this is a, a real setback for Elizabeth's policies. So the two men which she really relied on for support was the Duke of Alençon, so the Duke of Anjou. He looks slightly different in that painting there, but it's the man I showed you earlier, the, the frog. He dies in 1584, and so does William the Silent. So William the Silent, William of Orange, who was a Dutch Protestant leader, he is assassinated by a Catholic. So the two kind of men of influence on the ground who supplied troops and money to support the Dutch Protestant rebels in that region, well, they both die. So it's a turning point. And also, to strengthen the Spanish hand, we have the Treaty of Joinville, okay? So Henri of Guise, who was the head of the Catholic League, supports King Philip II's kind of influence in that region. So it seems a major setback for Elizabeth. But she doesn't stop. She doubles down, which shows that she's in a stronger position in the 1580s, and she's willing uh, to lead a kind of Protestant counter-movement against Spain's wishes. And so what Elizabeth does, she signs two treaties, okay? So one is the Treaty of Nonsuch, promising 600,000 silver florins a year to Dutch rebels, and that she will send her favourite, the man that she loved, Robert Dudley, the Earl of Leicester, to be the Governor General of the Spanish Netherlands to lead those troops there. Now, she also signs a quite a friendly agreement with the Scottish, okay? Okay, the Treaty of Berwick, which means that she doesn't really have a threat on her northern border, which allows her to support the Dutch rebels much more. Now, you can see this proxy conflict is boiling over, and it's no surprise that relations just got worse and worse between Spain and England in this kind of tussle for dominance in the Spanish Netherlands. So, therefore, you can see where this kind of war with Spain, the Spanish Armada, comes from. This is obviously one of the most significant causes, if not the most significant cause, of the Spanish Armada or the Anglo-Spanish War in this period. So to sum up the consequences of Elizabeth's foray into the Spanish Netherlands, they weren't ultimately hugely successful, but you can't say they were a complete failure either. She did support Protestants there. She didn't, she wasn't able to completely rem remove Spanish influence, but she was willing to stand up for Protestants in Europe and show that England had a kind of military muscle against Spain. Uh, obviously, it led to much more negative relations between England and Spain, ultimately culminating in the Spanish Armada in 1588.